full disclosure, the voice you are listening to now is artificially generated, brought to you by Satisphonic.com. See the link in the description for more details. What's the most absurd reason you've heard of someone cancelling their marriage? My Italian uncle cancelled his wedding because the bride's family, not Italian, would not serve lasagna at the wedding reception. He ended up marrying an Irish woman whose family was okay with serving lasagna at the reception. Lasagna and garlic bread is a weekly meal in a lot of Irish households. I'd fucking love to get served that at a wedding. This actually seems reasonable to me. It doesn't have to be about lasagna, but about communication, compromise and treating the groom as an equal partner. It's indicative of what the entire relationship might be like. That's also my take. It depends how she said no. Maybe he realized he won't have a single say in every future choices that should be made as a couple and will slowly lose his individuality. It depends how she said no. There's certainly room for nuance here. If he controlled every other aspect of the wedding and insisted that only lasagna be served, then yeah, that would be an absurd reason. One of my friends was engaged and is Catholic. Her husband had to convert and he had a dream where he was in a Catholic church but not getting married, he was a priest. So he had a vision of becoming a priest and now the wedding is up. Converting your fiancé mission failed successfully. I am from Middle East Muslim family and married a Christian Dutch person. I never wanted him to convert. He takes stuff too seriously and take my beer away. Me no never. This always reminds me of my stepsisters, Fyle, he's Muslim, so whenever he drinks alcohol, which fairly often lol, he puts a coaster on top of the glass so Allah doesn't see. Does he think Allah is like a Russian satellite that can only look straight down? No, he thinks Allah is like a baby without object permanence and gets fooled by peekaboo with a coaster. Lol, when I was in London, I knew a Muslim guy who would only drink at home out of a teapot so Allah couldn't see him. Numerous people that thought I was making that up. I also knew another Muslim guy who wouldn't eat pork but would shoot heroin. No idea on what behind that one. How long ago was this? Did he go through becoming a priest? This was about three months ago, and I guess he is on the way. Look. I was going to be a guest at a wedding and found out it was cancelled two weeks before the date. The bride found out that the groom had gotten a significant discount on the price of the venue and she was insanely angry that anything at her wedding cost less than premium. Keep in mind, this was her dream venue that she had chosen. She was just mad that her fiancé was cheap or something. I was never super close to either of them, but the last I heard, they never ended up getting married. Guy dodged a bullet there. No doubt my wife and I high-fived when we got a discount on our venue. Agreed, venue discounts are the among two most beautiful wedding-related words you can hear, narrowly second only to I do, or maybe free photography. Saved him the cost of a premium divorce attorney, I get. They realized after everything was already planned, invites sent out, etc., that they didn't like the date. They moved it to 2025, so there wouldn't be a four in their wedding date. Were they Chinese? In Mandarin, the word for four is very similar to the word for dead, so four is considered an unlucky number. Edit. As a Chinese-American, I find it very hard to believe a Chinese couple would let it get that far before they realized the date was not auspicious. No family fortune teller would be so negligent. Edited. Orc, this gained much more traction than I thought and people are questioned, so... I'm second generation Chinese and only half, so I don't know a lot about it. From what I can tell of my husband's family, there is either a trusted fortune teller known in the community, or B, a senior relative, who has always claimed to be a little bit clairvoyant, who has always claimed to be a little bit clairvoyant, who will be consulted. I do not know what happens when kids are born in April, on the 4th of any month, etc. A more likely scenario is that the couple set the date, printed out the invitations, then sent them out. Then, upon receiving the invitations, their aunts and uncles and grandmas made a huge fuss about the date and refused to go and wail tales of woe about how unlucky it was. The couple angrily changed all their plans. My family isn't that suspicious about this stuff, but my sister's in-laws were so picky that they consulted an expert to find the perfect date and all the decorations at the wedding had to be a specific number and color etch. Also, my mother-in-law kept rejecting proposed Chinese names for my daughters, you till their names had a certain number of strokes in the characters. So we chose names for my kids based on some made-up stupid formula. 
My dad kept recommending names he thought we'd like, and my mother-in-law would count strokes and veto the names. Their kids are just gonna jump straight from three to five. It's fun to imagine them aging to two, three, three, then five, like a building's floor. My cousin called it off three days in advance because the bride and groom couldn't agree on whether to hyphenate their last names or use his. In retrospect, there was a significant class culture divide of which that was merely one symptom. I used to work with a guy whose last name was West. When he married a woman with the last name Wild, she said she was happy to take his name. He told her that she was insane and they were not under any circumstances passing up the opportunity to be the Wild West family. The only valid argument I can easily see that argument escalating. Bride cancelled the wedding a week before because she was a hardcore Disney adult and she was offered a temp job at Disney and felt she couldn't miss the opportunity of her dream. Why couldn't she get married and do the temp job? Fiancé didn't approve? Conflicting dates? Disney only wants single women working their temp jobs? We live quite a few states away from Disney and she said she couldn't do the long distance. Really, she just wanted to party like a fat bro in Florida, without any repercussions. She made a songs to have sex to playlist on their shared Spotify a few days after they broke up. It absolutely crushed him. Gotta see this playlist. You got a friend in me. I'll make a man out of you what made the red man red. Let's get down to business. Then, orchestral ambient. I think that works. Oh man, what a shitty chick. Sounds like he dodged a bullet in the long run, but that must have hurt a ton at the time. Were they all Disney songs? No one fucks like Gaston. Darling, it's better down where it's wetter, take it from me. No one sucks like Gaston, cops these nuts like Gaston. No one grabs your cheeks and does the hip thrusts like Gaston. He's especially good at ejaculating. Nobody fucks like Gaston. How did it turn out, if I may ask? The groom took it hard for a while, but he's been dating a really sweet girl for a year now and seems happy. Last I heard of her is she's getting married soon and works in a cafe in the middle of bumfuck, nowhere, and her whole personality is Disney and alcohol. Man, the Disney people are really something else. I know someone who's absolutely up to their eyeballs in debt right now because they just can't stop taking trips to Disney World 2 three times a year. Two, three times a year. Jesus. I'm overwhelmed thinking about doing my first trip. I do have a Disney adult friend who maintains an annual pass for her family, Fawa people, and they go each month. They do not live in Flel and the flight is required each time they do this. She married another Disney adult and their world revolves around Disney and their vacations. But they won't do a Disney cruise. Too expensive. Why don't they just move to Orlando? I would be sad if she moved because I enjoy her company. Her in-laws are part of the Disney timeshare program, also Disney adults, so I know that they turn two trips a year into big family vacations and stay in one of the timeshare places. I do know when they go, she books the cheapest flights and super cheap accommodations. She is budget savvy, it's just mind-boggling to spend so much time at one destination. I'm going to see if she can take me on my first W trip, make it a girl's weekend or something. She's so high energy about Disney, but I guess that's a Disney adult thing. A temp job. Ong. What a horrible reason. My friend's former fiancé was a nice dude. Firefighter, easy to talk to, treated her well, and got her a nice ring. Every now and then the ring would go missing, but he would eventually find it safe and sound. She had a good job too, and was giving him thousands of dollars a month to fix up a house they had bought to live in after they'd gotten married. Turns out, dude was living two lives, or attempting to at the very least. He's married for tense years, and had two kids. The engagement ring was his wife's, and he stole it back every now and then to find it for her. There was never a house, he never bought one, and used all the thousands he had been given solely on cocaine. Needless to say, they cancelled the wedding. Stories like this make me wonder what the person's endgame is. Like how long did he think he could keep up the situation? They're a drug addict, there is no end game. It's just one day after the next. Eventually, it moves from day to day to hit to hit. What did happen to my dad? Not coke, but meth. It's horrible. This legitimately made my jaw drop. Hope your friend is on to much better things now. She is doing very well with a new partner. They're thriving. I'm in two minds about this.
On the one hand, that is absurd, he behaved like that, but on the other hand, the question was the most absurd reason, and this is pretty damn good reason to cancel the wedding. You. They did nothing. They picked a date, sent mails with it to invite people, and then did nothing until a week before said date. Of course, they could not rent the venue they wanted, nor find another one. They couldn't find caterer, dresses, etc. on time. But also, legally, they couldn't get married in such short notice. So they cancelled the wedding and will get married later. It's been five years. They're still not married. Kinda sounds like they're made for each other. Look, I have so many questions. How did they send an invite with no address? How did no one ask about the venue? How could people make plans to come without the location? They had a location in mind. They just thought that somehow they just had to call a week ahead to rent it, like reservation for your local restaurant. Honestly, I think that's somehow the worst possible explanation. How does not one but two people manage their way through life with this level of obliviousness? One of my marines has one that takes the cake. His marriage was cancelled because his spouse's parents had a dream that he would become abusive and an addict. She left him because of her parents' dream. He's now a multimillionaire. That's an abusive addict. Well, they weren't wrong. My brother-in-law is former military and now a successful businessman worth millions. He's also a controlling asshole. When my in-laws met him, they asked me afterward if he was abusing my sister. There is a history of abusive spouses in their family, and they sniffed out the signs without any background from me. Yes, he is, but she puts up with it for the money and lifestyle. That does not sound like a recipe for a happy marriage life. That's an abusive addict. You already said he was a marine. The best man said in his speech that he slept with the bride about two weeks before the wedding. All hell broke loose. The groom demanded that the marriage be cancelled. It took a few days to get the truth out. It took a few days to get the truth out. The best man thought it'd be a great prank. The groom was apologetic to the bride, but she didn't forgive him because he believed in others' lies. Eyes won't let her talk. Holy shit, that best man is an asshole. In what world is that funny? He is a big ah. While hunting for the truth, found out best man has a history of sleeping with groom's past chiefs, his crushes. Still trying to figure out why groom stayed friends with this arsh. A while ago, bride found out groom is still friends with a. The friend ruined their relationship and cost them tens of thousands of dollars, and they're still friends. What a. Bride's father paid for the wedding, so he sued his ass in court. Dad sued the groom or the asshole. And did the dad win? He sued. Ah, the groom was on a side. Dad won. This needs to be a much longer post. Holy shit! Groom was on a side in court. What could he have possibly said in ass defense? But from what I recall, groom said no one has the same sense of humor as best man. That he was the worst friend to best man and everyone, including himself, overreacted to best man's joke. So the bride dodged a bullet, is what I'm hearing. So groom knew that his friend had a garbage sense of humor, but still believed it wasn't a joke. Groom is an idiot. Does the groom have zero other friends? How close are you with them? I'm just extremely curious about why he would stay friends with this person. I'm only close with bride. I wasn't friends with groom. From what I recall, all the other groom's men were his aid bride relatives, brothers, cousins. So he has no friends and therefore sticks with the one person who he knows, even though that person is a fuck off. I've seen that before. Very unfortunate. One of my former friends called off her wedding because she was convinced the guy was either cheating or would cheat in the future. He wasn't cheating on her and hasn't cheated on the woman he ended up marrying years later. The former friend found a new man, got married, had kids. The man has cheated on her from the very start of their relationship, but she refuses to hear about it. Self-fulfilling prophecy, maybe. One often meets their fate on the road they take to avoid it. The groom had a fake essen because he was dodging child support from a previous marriage. He told bride he had neither an ex-wife or child. The essen was figured out at the courthouse when they were applying for a marriage license. He created fake documents at the Staples that morning. Yeah, that's as good a reason as any. Faking documents to escape child support is a new one. Cause the man was gay, and she was just his test to see if he could love a girl. She was heartbroken, but had her suspicions about him. Wow, that must be devastating. Surely he could have figured it out by dating for a few months. You would have thought so. They were together three years. I think he was trying to convince people he wasn't gay. Also, it was a long time ago. 
I think being from the area we're from, he wanted to hide it also, small town in northern England. This was about 20 years ago, when people were less forgiving, unfortunately. My brother called it off on the morning of the wedding. She was incredibly controlling, faked a pregnancy, and didn't want to meet any of his family, even though she lived a mile away. Her mother got her to cancel the reception hall a week before because she wanted it at her house. Loads of people dropped out, and my brother felt the pressure. I thank the universe that he called it off. I doubt I would have seen him again. Wish he didn't do it on the day, though. My uncle and ex-aunt called off the wedding because God told them to wait a month before the wedding. They lived across the country, so my parents had to fly with three children under ten years old, and the tickets were non-refundable. My uncle called my dad with a new date, about six months after the original date. Naimon called him later, and when he asked if we would be coming to the wedding, she said that she spoke to God and he told her to bring her kids to Disney instead. My parents still joke about it today, and my uncle divorced that wife a year or two later. Happy ending though, he married his best friend about a decade later, and they are truly perfect for each other. She really is a wonderful woman, and we couldn't be happier for them. You only get the rug pulled once, thus saith the Lord. A friend of mine dated a guy for eight years. They were young, it started in high school, had the wedding all planned and mostly paid for. A month before the wedding she found him stealing her money and gambling with it. She ended up selling a dress on eBay, gave the ring back to his best friend, who it turns out paid for it. Then eventually married the best friend. They are still happily married ten years later with a cute little boy. Edit. Everyone keeps asking. No, they did not use the original ring. I believe they sold it. She wore that ring for a while before they were supposed to get married. So there were a lot of bad feelings when he, first guy, figuratively, stabbed her in the back. No way would I, or probably any woman out there, would want to continue wearing it. Sheesh, are the two still friends? Hell no. I used to work with her when she was still in college, getting her masters and this was all happening. She graduated and got a good job in her field. I don't actually see or talk with her anymore except occasionally on Facebook. He told my good friend the day before the wedding that she had to give up her job and stay at home because he just wanted someone to take care of him and the kids when they arrived and that he was only marrying her because of that. Some months before that, he pressured her to give up her job after she got married, which she refused to do, and he'd told her then that he'd make her give it up, but she thought he was joking, which really shocked me. The relationship was toxic, and I was surprised she was still going through with it. She finally promised him she'd give up her job, but her dad overheard the whole thing and intervened, and she saw sense and backed out of the wedding. She's married now to someone pretty wonderful. No idea what happened to him. I was at the bachelor party when the text came in, she was calling off the wedding that was in one week. Because we are super nerds, we decided on going to arcade hopping around like instead of bar hopping. I drove because I am the sober friend. She was at her bachelorette party in Vegas, at the same with like eight of her closest friends. We all meet in the afternoon and drove to the earliest closing arcade. Fiancé was texting pics of the girls at the Vegas show. He started texting pics back, it was cute. They both kept it up throughout the night. At about 8 p.m. she stopped. We figured they were at a show where cameras should be away, and he kept sending fun pics. At 9.30, he got like four long ass texts in a row while I was driving to a barcade. Everyone was a couple beers in for the night as the last place was also a barcade. Turns out after group discussion with the girls, she did not want to raise a child husband and he would have to give up video games and dirt and get adult hobbies. There was some long explanation that I feel like was being fed to her by her friends. He said they should talk when back and it was not something to figure out that night while they were out having fun. She said agree or no wedding, he said no wedding. An arcade adventure with the guys got his wedding cancelled. She was big mad he would not discuss it when she got back and tried to tell him she was drunk and someone else sent the text and she didn't mean it. But man, that was a wild ride that night. My ex-wife hit me with I need you to give up all your hobbies and your friends and grow up. Meanwhile, she was cheating on me. That was 15 years ago. That was 15 years ago. Baldur's Gate 3 is pretty great, you guys. I'm just sitting here trying to figure out what makes a hobby adult or child. Even toy collecting where the toy is kept in the box is almost always a parent's idea. Ex-wife told me playing music, cooking, baking, sewing, reading and gardening were our childish. Never mind that those things paid our bills. I guess as an adult man, I should be in wrestling bears or punching cattle or something. Completely unrelated. Don't punch cattle.
It won't hurt the cow. The other day I was going through my x-ray history looking for something. All the ones where I have a good story for the description by the doctor is blunt trauma to right hand or something like that. Then one literally says, punched a cow. Sounds like he dodged a crazy bullet. They were 18 and very religious and everyone but their parents knew that deep down they were getting married so they could have sex. Got hitched to the deed. And ended up going, ah, that was anticlimactic, and getting an annulment. They were married two months tops. They didn't have enough donations from friends and family. They set a date, and when they sent out the invitations, they included a line stating invitations returned without the required minimum would not get seated in the hall, another not allowed into the wedding. The bride and groom would make an appearance outside in the parking lot so they could have a chance to congratulate them, though. They received... Zero dollars? Why? Their minimum was one hundred dollars. Two hundred fifty dollars if you wanted food. Five hundred dollars included cake service. For alcohol, fifty dollars got you six drink tickets, and I think the cheapest drink was two tickets, and some were ten. So one hundred fifty dollars for dinner. And two hundred fifty dollars for cake? What is this cake made of? Money! Yeah! I'll go to an expensive dinner myself and say hi from the parking lot. My mom was engaged to be married to her high school sweetheart, let's call him Bob. Bob went to her doorstep two weeks before their wedding and told her he had joined the military and wasn't ready for marriage. He flew to Germany the next day. Fast forward, 30 years and two divorces later, my mom was single with five children from two marriages. She runs into her old high school sweetheart, Bob. He is also single and recently divorced. They fall in love and have been together ever since. Spoiler alert. Bob is actually his name. I know a Bob. Me too, but my Bob spells it backward. Bob. Ball? Happened at my church to rather prominent members of the congregation. The wife gets cancer. The husband divorces wife because she cannot perform her wifely duties. Not because she medically can't, but because she had to have a mastectomy. She eventually recovered. The husband later accidentally shot himself while cleaning a gun and became paralyzed below the waist. Karma. Karma. Guy had a city hall courthouse wedding, was issued a marriage certificate, said, I do to all the questions asked. Yet in his mind, because he did not have a church wedding, he wasn't married. Less than a month later, they got an annulment. Ex-wife was obviously pissed. She wasn't religious, so didn't want to have a church wedding and thought he knew what a courthouse wedding was at. Go figure. The dude was living a double life, had a whole another family in different state. Said he traveled for work to actually back and forth between family and fiance. First of all, how on earth does someone have the time to do that and the money? Every time I hear about one of these, I wonder how the dude handles customers. Groom was in a relationship with his best man, only people unaware with a bride and her family. I don't know if this qualifies as cancelling. Indian bride went through all the ceremonies and got married, then told the groom she had fallen out of love with him, but not to worry as they hadn't signed any paperwork yet, so weren't considered married by law. Left the day after the wedding, and a week or so later, left the country with the groom's friend, whom she ended up marrying soon after. Well, they say weddings are a good place to meet people. Usually not your own, but whatever. Family member, very night, picky left her husband after two months of marriage for constantly leaving his socks on the floor. To this day, talks about what an amazing man and partner he was if only he put his dirty socks in the hamper instead of on the floor. Edit. I wrote this at work so I didn't put any detail in and figured I should add it. Her husband, now ex, did all the cleaning, cooking and paid all the bills. They didn't have kids either. They're both child free. He would take his socks off when he got in bed at night throw them on the floor, and then in the morning, he would pick them up and wash them with the other clothes. He wasn't messy or rude, she actually was a bit emotionally abusive to him. She's a narcissist and a nasty person in general. We were surprised they even got together because he was so nice, and she has always been mean-spirited. He treated her like a princess, too. I only add this because I don't want people getting the wrong impression about him, as he didn't deserve an ounce of what he got. I pay attention to where my husband drops his dirty clothes and strategically plays the hamper. Damn it, someone put a hamper in my dirty clothes. Spot. Well, joke's on them. I'll just put my clothes in the hamper. That'll show them. 
I was engaged and we had started paying on the location, and then one time we had a party and he got drunk and decided to be funny. He smacked me across my face and pushed me into a fridge, all while one of his friends watched him do this, and his friend got up and walked out of the room. So I left him. I didn't feel like it was an absurd reason, but my family did. Cause a huge fight for years afterward. If you did the right thing, it would only have gotten worse. That's honestly how I felt too. Yay, he had the excuse he was drunk, but he knew what he did the next day. My wife's cousin M fiance cancelled the wedding because they couldn't agree on where to put used towels after showering. She would put a wet towel in the hamper after each shower. He couldn't get past the fact that A. She was putting wet towels in the hamper and B. That she only used the towel once. Though he is crazy, I'm with him on this one. Seems trivial on the surface. But that's the kind of shit that wears you down. Also indicative of basic difference in how a person approaches life which will manifest in ways you can't necessarily see coming. I knew a couple who met, got engaged and married within less than two years. Six months later, they had an annulment. Why, you may ask. He's Jehovah, and she's Catholic. He doesn't believe in celebrating Christmas or birthdays. She does. Apparently, they didn't understand each other very well when discussing kids because they don't speak the same language. I wish I could make this up. Cousin, they'd been together for years, had a two-year-old child already. Less than a month before the wedding, she finds out he was regularly cheating on her, their entire relationship. We still made the trip out there. Unfortunately, it turned into a funeral trip for an uncle who passed. Not exactly an absurd reason to cancel. I think the fact that we planned to go to a wedding and ended up at a funeral was the absurd part. My grandfather was stationed in Italy during the war and met a girl there. He even flew his parents out to Italy for the wedding. The night before their wedding, the night before their wedding, all the guests and were having a good time and his fiancée stuck her chewing gum in his hair. The end, the end. Bride ended up getting gangbanged at her bachelorette party by strippers. One of the bridesmaids filmed it and put it online. Bride's grandpa found it and told the groom. Bride's grandpa found it. This is the real story. Don't you hate when you're cranking down to some old-fashioned bachelorette party orgies and you notice the bachelorette just happens to be your grandkid? We've all been there. If you're gonna use the internet to find you some whores, y'all can't be mad that one might be yours. Cop doji redmore. The biggest shock is that there is a bachelorette party orgy porn scene out there that isn't fake, if Op's story is true of course. He was subscribed to the friend's only fan. How nice of the grandfather to support a friend's small business. Every word of that story just gets trashier as you go. Late to the party. Guy dates girl guy, says he doesn't want kids girl does, but they enjoy each other's company so they keep dating for a while. Guy proposes, girl says yes, no talk of kids. The story they tell is Guy proposed thinking of she says, yes, she changed her mind. Girl thinks he's proposing, he must have changed his mind. No one talks about kids until about a year in, no one has changed their minds. Amicable divorce, edited for spelling. I broke up with the coolest girl I've ever known and dated because of this. She wanted them but said after a few years that she didn't care if I ever changed my mind and would become child free if that's what I wanted. Made me realize that you have to have the same vision for your entire life to successfully be life partners. And even though I loved her, it ended. She now has five kids. This shit is no joke, and you're completely right that it's wild for people to get past the point of marriage without clearing it up, or sometimes even living together first.